Welcome back friends and thanks for joining me for another video. Sorry I haven't done an actual full length video in a while and uh, hopefully this video will make up for that. Some of you will remember that the last actual video I did was an unboxing and in that package was some Asian Black Widows that I received from a friend of mine. This video is a follow up on those animals and uh, there's some good news and some not so good news but hopefully you guys will enjoy this video and I can kind of make up for not having done a video in a while. So one of these black widows needs a new home, which you see in front of her. The smaller cup on top is her current home and she has outgrown that. So we are going to rehouse her. And as I rehouse her, I'm going to try to give you uh, the best angles I can of her. Of course, a lot of that I will focus on once we get her transferred because when I'm moving the animal, of course, you know, be, me being by myself and not having someone to work the camera, I will focus more on the animal for my safety and for her safety. And then after that, we'll try to get some looks at her. And I've learned quite a bit of information from this friend of mine over the past several weeks. So I'm going to try to share every tidbit of that knowledge that I can remember. Hopefully I can remember it all, but I may not be able to. But at the end of this video, if I can change at least one person's mind about these beautiful animals and help them to see the beauty in these animals and understand that they're not deadly and out to kill you, then I've done my job. So I'm going to quit rambling. We're going to rearrange everything. We're going to get her in her new house. Then I'll try to get the camera on her and you can kind of see her moving around as I start to relay some of this information. So get ready, guys. Let's move ourselves to Black Widow. Go get you a snack. Go get a drink. Let's all meet right back here and let's do this. So before we get around to the actual widow and the rehousing, I just want to show you the enclosure that I'm going to move her into. Um, this I bought from Walmart and is a Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, it's kind of like a food storage container. This thing measures five inches by five inches by eight inches tall. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's absolutely perfect for her. <clears throat> I uh, took a few sticks from my yard, plus some uh, fake plants and moss that I had put everything together and uh, made her a nice house. I tried to give her plenty of anchor points and even some places to retreat, you know, under the leaves or whatever, uh, but not to overcrowd the enclosure. So she has plenty of room to make her webbing and her trap lines and everything. And you notice the little pieces of moss, that's just kind of to cover up the glue. And you'll see there's two different colors of moss. I ran out of the green moss, so I had to use the uh, sphagnum moss and then Probably my favorite feature on this enclosure, I had something similar on the enclosure of the uh, Southern Black Widow that I had a couple of years ago. I had a um, vent on the top, much like this one right here, and then it's got these little tabs to where you can bend it over and it'll stay in place. Well, I straightened all but one of them out so that I can take the vent in and out. So when I go to feed her food, I would just take this off, drop the food in, then I don't have to disturb her as much. So that is a handy little feature. Now that I have showed you her new home, let's talk about her and let's get her in there, shall we? So I'll give you a little bit of a look here real quick. This is the sole survivor of the five that the friend of mine sent me. You will remember one of them molted in transit, died the next day. That next day, another one molted and it died afterwards. That happened two more times. So I had three of them that molted and then right after they molted, they died. She was the only one that survived and she has been doing very well ever since. And as you can see, she is in need of a new home. Also, she is now mature and you can see in comparison to my fingers, uh, how tiny she actually is. So um, I'm going to try to maybe just lay this cup down and tickle her into the new enclosure and as I do that I'll try to relay some of the information now I did mention um, in the last video and you can go back and watch that that this um, species of black widow is from Asia and basically southern Asia southeast Asia almost anywhere from India to Japan with exception of a few countries. Um, and this particular 
spider right here. The bloodline is from India. Of course, she's being a little uncooperative here. It might help to kind of take some of this webbing out. Um, this girl's um, grandparents were actually from India, so she is only uh, second generation captive bred, so the the, uh, the bloodlines are, are still super clean. You know, in the hobby with a lot of the other widow spiders, they have been bred and crossbred and everything so much that they... Uh, the bloodlines are a little bit muddied now. You, you may notice there on the screen that she's kind of sliding along that clear glass. They cannot get a grip on um, smooth surfaces like glass and acrylic, but now she has found a limb and she's moving around. Um, let me try to rearrange the camera while I give you the rest of the information on this beautiful species. All right. Now you guys can focus on the spider and I can focus on giving you all the information that I can give you. As I mentioned, these guys are from South Asia, Southeast Asia, and East Asia. Uh, and one thing that this guy shared with me after I got mine that he had observed in this particular species was a trouble at like typical like room temps. Why? Is my camera doing that? Uh, with them between 5th and 6th instar and 6th and 7th instar, seem like more of them died after molting uh, at those more like common room temps. So he took a large group and put them at 90 degrees and they seem to do a lot better.